moving on to our annual segment. Drew, you want to take it over from here? Absolutely not, sir. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so do you want to start AFC or NFC? Let's do the good old AFC. I think that one will be fun because uh, I don't know about you, man, but I struggled trying to come up with who I thought was going to take away that division. And uh, I don't know if you felt the same way, but I feel like it's going to be a lot more competitive in the AFC North this year. So yes. what are your thoughts on that? I feel that way. I will say this. I'm very low on Cleveland. Yeah. I, I'm actually not high on them like I normally am. Yeah. The way that Deshaun Watson played last year kind of concerned me. Mm-hmm. Um, and defensively, even with Miles Garrett, I'm a little I'm a little hesitant on this team this year. And yeah. their receivers, I'm not like super into. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I, I just, yeah, it's, I'm a little concerned about the Browns. So I'm very, I'm actually surprisingly very low on the, on the Browns. And mm-hmm. I think I'm pretty high on the Steelers. So, yeah, you know what, if I had to summarize it, I'm not terribly low on the Browns, but I don't think they're going anywhere. And Steelers, I think they're going to be much improved from last year. And uh, I, I feel like that this division is probably going to be the most competitive um, of the bunch. I think that they're solid teams. They're just one has got to be last place and there's only w- going to be one first place team. So it's kind of, you know, each game is really going to matter within these teams and the division games nonetheless as well. I think those are going to be super pivotal as well. So, yeah. And also I have noticed that there's going to be a few teams that I'm probably going to have it like, 15 and two and i'm like mm, I'm yeah have to change gotta take, that gotta so take that not in this bit. division or <laughs> yeah. or the next division but i can see in future i'm kind of like oh this is a win easily oh this yeah. is a win easily and then i'm like dude they have to lose at some point yeah <laughs> so so <laughs> i can kind of foresee some uh, some interesting things that i'm gonna have to kind of uh, maneuver so yeah same all right so let me just kick us off here i'm gonna go four to one so i'm gonna okay. go fourth place to first place uh, fourth place, I have Cleveland Browns. I have them with an eight and nine record, losing wow. record. Yes. Okay. I, here's why, though. I think that they have a okay defense. Nick Chubb, I think, is elite. I think that they have a good offensive line. You are I, so in love with Nick Chubb. You are he, so in love with I mean, him. he's consistent. I don't know what else you want him to do. He's consistent. Anyways, and uh, I agree. The Deshaun Watson thing bugs me, and I don't think Stefanski is going to last after this season. So. <laughs> Um, I have Pittsburgh at number three at 10 and seven. So I think that they are going to be improved from last year. I think uh, with their receivers, I think they're going to be improved. Their defense, I think is going to be better and healthy. And I think they're going to be extremely competitive. They may not be great on the road, which is majority of their games to me are going to be on the road that they lose and to good competitive teams. But um, I feel like Pittsburgh is uh, at least going to be 500 and maybe making a wild card push. Number two, this is going to probably shock you the most, Drew. Um, I have the Cincinnati Bengals at number two. What? But, yes, but hold on, hold on. Keep don't going, don't going. get your don't get your knickers twisted here. I got him at eleven and six. <laughs> uh, so I think uh, Joe Burrow having the uh, calf injury does change a little things. He will be healthy by the regular season, from all accounts. Um, I just think that they have a very competitive schedule. I mean, they open at. Cleveland. They are on the road to the Ravens in week two. They've got to play in San Francisco. They have a Thursday night in Baltimore. They got to play at home against Jacksonville. I just think they have a really competitive schedule with some competitive teams that I think have improved. And I think the Bengals are a good team. I think they're a potential playoff team, maybe even wild card, depending on how schedules play out in injury. But I have them finishing the division number two. And so number one, I have the Baltimore Ravens finishing number one at 11 and six. I have them tying, but I have them taking the division. Um, I love that they signed OBJ. I feel like they did a lot to address some weapons. I feel like he's going to elevate that offense. And I think Lamar Jackson is going to have a very good season coming up. Um, And I just feel like Baltimore has this, uh, you know, this energy about them that has rejuvenated them. And I feel like that their defense is going to be better. I feel like that it's going to, motivate the offense and i feel like baltimore is going to be a team in the afc and specifically in the north that is going to surprise a lot of people and i think that it's going to be their year uh in this division that year so that's what i have in the north 
All right, so I will do what you did. I will go four to one here. So in fourth place in the AFC North, I have the Cleveland Browns. Like I said, I'm very low on them. I have mm-hmm. them at five and twelve. Wow. Uh, yes. Um, all of, I I could see how they could get to eight and nine. So I I'm not saying that I think that my prediction is completely right, but just looking at the schedule and how things would go. Um, I think there are some times where they could play down to the competition, um, where they should be, you know, playing how they normally play. And I can just see some easy losses and then all of a sudden it starts slipping away. Cause there's, there's a stretch where they're like away for one. I want to say it was like, I guess it's only two weeks. I'm sorry, but it's like they face Baltimore, not Baltimore, Denver and the Los Angeles Rams, Mm -hmm. which I think are two very tough places to play. Um, And then they have to face Jacksonville after that. That's week 12, 13 and 14. So that's a pretty tough ask just right then and there. And then also in week 11, the week before they play Denver, they play Pittsburgh. So Mm -hmm. it's a pretty tough schedule. Um, So, that's kind of why I'm very low on the Browns is mainly because of how the schedule is working out for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think it's going to go well. So that's why I have them at five and 12. Um, I have Pittsburgh at number three with eight and nine. Like I said, I'm pretty high on them. I think they are uh, a very good team. Hold on. You um, think eight wins is high for them? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> I mean, Mike Tomlin. Okay, we'll get into it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but number two, I have Baltimore Ravens at ten and seven. Okay. And then um, at uh, number one, I have the Cincinnati Bengals at eleven and six. Oh, I thought you were going to say like fifteen and two or something. No, no. Okay. So, I told you it wasn't this division. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I guess I'm hung up on the Steelers. So you don't think that they're going to win more than eight? I don't because I do feel like this division is very strong. So Mm -hmm. most of this division is pretty much splitting games. Yeah. Same. Um, they start their, their season off with a 49ers. So I think that's an ultimate loss. Mm -hmm. I think they beat Las Vegas or, okay. So I think they win, uh, against the Browns in week two, because I do it's in Pittsburgh. So I feel like, that's just a win. Yeah. Um, week three, they go to Vegas to play the Raiders. I think that's a win for the Steelers. Mm-hmm. Um, week four, they go to Houston. I think it's actually a loss. I do think that after playing the Raiders, um, they might be on a high, but it's two weeks in a row. I feel like Houston can get one on them uh, where they don't see it coming. Mm-hmm. Uh, week five, it's they play Baltimore in in uh, Pittsburgh. Or, sorry, it's uh, is it, yeah, it's Pittsburgh. Uh, so I, I think, uh, I think they'll get the win there. Then they get a week off and then they face the Rams. Yeah. I almost put that as a win for them, but mm-hmm. I just feel like it's in LA. They are coming off of a buy. I could see them winning this game, but I just kind of wanted to give the Rams the win on this one just because it is in Los Angeles. And that's yeah. usually kind of one of my deciding factors. And I believe in Stafford more than Pickett, And that's kind yeah. of a tiebreaker for me. Um, then they face Jacksonville in week eight. I think that's a loss. Um, yeah. uh, they face Tennessee in week nine in Pittsburgh. I think that's a win for them. Mm-hmm. Um, week 10 in Pittsburgh against green Bay win. Um, week 11 at Cleveland loss week 12 at Cincinnati loss. Then they come home and play Arizona. I think that's a win. So new England, they face, I think new England can get them. Uh, win against Indianapolis. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they win against Cincinnati and then they lose against Seattle and lose against Baltimore to end their year. So Brad said that Pittsburgh and Cleveland are going to tie in their first meeting. <laughs> <That laughs> yeah, it seems funny. like it happens every single year. Yeah, every no single year. So, so this is yeah, I just, I just feel like um, there's, there's a lot. I gave like new, I could see the new England game swinging. Yeah. I could see the Seattle game swinging. Um, I honestly could see Arizona. I could see them losing to Arizona at some point. Like Arizona just gets one on them because mm-hmm. they were a way away and then they get home. And yeah. so they kind of relax and all of a sudden they lose. So I, I can see how some of these games um, could get switched. But my first initial feeling, uh, mm-hmm. my process that I go through, I just feel like um, 
Pittsburgh, I don't think a lot of people look at Pittsburgh and go, this is going to be a great team. I think they yeah. look at Kenny Pickett and go, he's all right. You know, he's fine. Yeah. He's not Ben Roethlisberger. He's, um, he's not Mason Rudolph. So that's a um, fact. Yeah. You know, so, you know, there, there could be some good wins here. I could see a, a way where Pittsburgh could get in, but I really do feel like this AFC North is really tough. I mean, Lamar Jackson is still in Baltimore. If he mm-hmm. wasn't, I would have a different feeling about Pittsburgh, but you know, Cincinnati and Baltimore, those I, I had to have them in my top two. And this is kind of how I figured uh, I was going to have the AFC North. What I do is I normally kind of, write down who I think is going to be first, second, third, and fourth. Mm -hmm. And then I ultimately write who I actually have. And it came out how I thought it would. So um, to me, this isn't really a a surprise, but I don't know. Okay. I love how two years in a row you picked Baltimore to win the division and I picked Cincinnati. And now this year we flopped that because I picked Baltimore winning this division. Because I keep getting have- boned yeah. by Baltimore. I keep <laughs> And I keep forgetting that Lamar Jackson gets hurt every year. So, well, but I will I'm say hoping. this. I'm going to put a pushback on you were saying that Joe Burrow, mm-hmm. uh, the calf injury might say the guy had off season surgery last year looked awful for the first like two weeks and then all of a sudden was just like Joe Burrow again. I don't think the calf injury is going to really do that. So let me just say, I don't think that Joe Burrow is going to lessen his play. I just think like they were off to a slow start last season and he had, you know, off season surgery. He made it into week one. It was just, they came out slow. I feel like they're going to come out slow. I also don't know what their run game is going to look like because Joe Mixon may have just gotten like a one year extension, but he didn't play very well for most of the first half of the season. I think that they're going to be a very good and competitive football team. They're going to be contenders, but I just don't know if like in the early part of the season, they're going to, they're going to do as well as people say they should. Like I have them, losing at, ho- at on the road to the Browns and losing to the Ravens. But I have them then following that on a four game winning streak. And then their next loss comes from in San Fran. Cause I think San Francisco's defense is really, really good. And they have an, a really explosive offense. And I don't know if the Brown or excuse me, if uh, the Bengals have an answer for their explosive offense, but again, we're, we're predicting schedules here with no information outside of like what we know of as of today. So this could all look like nothing. The Bengals could go 16, 17 and zero before we know it, or they can yeah. go. zero and 17. That's just basically what we're working with. But I just think that they're going to be a slow start and then they'll pick it up. They're going to do what the Bengals do and they're going to be competitive. I just think that, you know, they're still going to win 11 games, which is what you have. But I just think that Baltimore is going to be right there with them. And I feel like Baltimore has addressed a lot of their uh, weapons issue. And I think their run game is going to be better. And I think that they are going to make a push for the North, in my opinion. So, Yeah, I think they're going to be around there. I think they're definitely going to get wild card spot. Well, yeah, I shouldn't say that yet because I haven't done all my predictions yet. Same, same, same. I don't want to predict who's a wild card or not a wild card yet. I think they're at least in the running. Yeah, I think they're at least in the running. And uh, for you uh, Giants, excuse me, you Giants fan who who are listening, Giants won 4-2. So, there we go. 